Hi y'all. I uh, wanted to talk to you about a question that I get very often, which is about the difference between Bharatanatyam and Kuchipudi. And it's a really valid question because these two styles, out of all of the classical dance styles, are really close together. And there's a reason for this. And it's very simple. It's because the states are right next to each other. So Kuchipudi came from Andhra Pradesh, which is right next to Tamil Nadu, where Bharatanatyam originated. And all of these, uh, these states, this region was called the Madras Presidency and these states only came into being in the 1950s when they felt that they need a cultural identity for each of the states which is very specific and so Kuchipudi became the dance form of Andhra and Bharatanatyam became the dance form of uh, Tamil Nadu. There are many other dance forms in Andhra, there are many other dance forms in Tamil Nadu. Uh, these were kind of created, what we perform today is obviously not what was performed 500 years ago, although the roots lie over there. Uh, so yeah, like most of you know, and you can read up on this anywhere, that Kuchipudi comes from Andhra, male dance drama form performed in the countryside, mostly uh, themes on Vishnu. Bharatanatyam, temple dance form uh, started in the temples with Devadasis. Um, so yeah, it's a female practice. So. That's the fundamental difference in the origins. Let's do a few steps and see if you can find a visual difference in the movements themselves. So we're going to start with one. You tell me if it's Kuchpuri or Bharatanatyam. Kuchpuri or Bharatanatyam? Kuchpuri, yes. Uh, another one. visually immediately right you see more of a, a body bend you see me bending from the waist you see these angles in Kuchpuri which you don't you know diagonal lines you see a little bit of the more of the tribhang which is you know the head is tilted one way shoulders another way hips another way in Kuchpuri more than in Bharatanatyam which has more of an emphasis on the Aramandi and the Natyaramba which is more geometrical, you have more of the straight lines. So this is an immediate visual difference. The repertoire also has some differences, but there's a lot of overlap. So, you know, because we are based also on similar zones of poetry, of music, Carnatic music, uh, Kuchipuri obviously has more of a lilt in its music, it comes from more folk elements, it comes from dance drama elements, the performers in Kuchipudi earlier used to sing, they used to dance, they used to act, they used to improvise on stage. They were family. There were certain families of musicians and dancers who were Kuchipudi uh, actors at that time. Only boys from certain families used to perform. So when you're performing with your uncle or your father or your brother who's on stage with you, it's obviously a different kind of a connect. Um, than what we have today, where we're all sort of professionals and uh, we come together for the shows, we rehearse and then we disband. But that's a different story. So the repertoire, uh, which it comes from dance drama tradition in Kuchipudi, has a lot more of character. The dancer becomes the character. So Kuchipudi will typically start with a prayer, go on to a small nritta piece or a shabdam perhaps, which is a little story with a bit of dancing, uh, then a character piece. Bhama Kalapam is very famous. Um, uh, Usha Parinyam is very famous. 
and then tarangam, which is the dance on the plate, which everybody looks forward to in a Kuchipudi performance. Um, Bharatanatyam has the very central position of the Varnam. But now Varnam was also done in Andhra by Kuchipudi uh, performers. Uh, there is, you know, uh, uh, records of this, but it's sort of gotten, um, it's sort of disappeared from the Kuchipudi repertoire now. Um, so yeah, so there's overlap. Now, why is all this important? Why do I find this so interesting? It's because it helps you to see that what is important is that these are just dance languages. These little technicalities are fun. They're very important as a practitioner. They're very important as a teacher because we have to stay true to this legacy that we are connected to. This past that we have of hundreds of years of Kuchipudi or Bharatanatyam, we have to stay true to it and connect it to all these gurus who have given us this dance over generations. However, I think as a curator, as an audience member, uh, as a critic, um, and even as a creator of dance, it doesn't really matter that much what language you speak. What really matters is what you're saying. So what is the message? What is the intention behind creating that piece, behind getting on stage? Let's not get into the details of the grammar and the, you know, the technique and things like that. Those are important. Otherwise, it's not attractive. It's not fun to watch. But what is the dancer or the choreographer trying to say? What is the point of this piece? What is the story? How does it move you? And I always find that whether you're dancing contemporary dance or Bharatanatyam or tango or you know, whether you specialize in dancing in high heels, it doesn't matter. What matters is what are you trying to say? So these are just dance languages. Being fluent in a dance language like Kuchpuri or Bharatanatyam is very important if you want to say something. Uh, but what you're trying to say is much more important than the medium in which you're saying it.